Hey, well, we're back again at the West Hollywood Silver Spoon and it's times, times three, November 29th on a balmy Los Angeles day. And boy, are we lucky, the rest balmy. of the... Why never, it's I never, balmy. I haven't heard any moms. Balmy. Where did balmy yeah. come from? I don't know, but... Did, Bombing is an explosion. Balmy, yeah. yeah. You know, you balmy. talk about the balmy winds oh, that, in Miami. The sway of the trees. The trees, that's right, the soft air. You know, you're like. speaking about nature reminded me of something I saw on the blog the other day, David's beautiful painting, The Road Home, a uh, beautiful landscape. It was the road that uh, Dr. Vizag Dr. Zhivago took after he was... See his home? after he was let go from the ragtag army and uh, as you know Pasternak uh, he used to be a wonderful poet and then he became a prose writer in Russia and uh, what I liked David was the colors not only the journey uh, but I also like the way that the gray blue and the, where was this the, picture it was on the blog on the times times three and then the violet the violet sky and then it's collected uh, uh, reflected down a little bit in the journey but it's just a beautiful evocation of uh, his journey and I know you said in that little piece you wrote under that Dr. Zhivago was one of your or if not one maybe the favorite film of yours Is yeah it's true? a favorite movie I can always go back and watch that anytime you know it's uh, I think it's just one of those kind of movies that has every element in it that you would ever want in a motion picture which I think was typical of uh, David Lean's kind of work. I, I think Sir Robert Bolt wrote that as well. I think he was uh, the, the screen, <laughs> excuse me, screenwriter on that. Well, one of the one scene that I remember was when uh, Steiger has the Julie Christie character and he's going to make love with her. Yes. And then all of a sudden you see that happened. I don't know if there's blood on the sheets, but then, then he cuts to the blood with the rebels being crushed by the army and the blood on the snow. I mean, David Lean was great at taking the intimate moment and then juxtaposing it with like a real large yeah, universal moment. moment. Yeah. Well, you, you caught it all right. I'm, I'm not familiar which picture you're talking about, or where, where it was, or... It was on the oh, blog. I mean the painting? It's on our Times Times 3 blog. Oh, that's the first time we announced that. It's amazing. People yeah. must be looking under the sofa, in the frigidaire, where is this painting? It's on the blog. blog. It's on the blog. Well, they wouldn't mention the painting, they <laughs> tell me where it was. Yeah, that's right. So, go to, go to the blog. Well, we did, that's why we're different. Yeah. And we'll mention a blog. I tell you I'll, I'll post it on the screen. Drive you crazy. We'll, we'll put it as a super on the screen. Well, times, all times three. paintings are like that. They're gorgeous. They're easy. Well, you know, I always say about painting. Well, you weren't taught painting, were you? Not really. It's. Uh, I mean, I, I did some art classes when I was very young, but you don't really learn anything there. Yeah, it's. It comes from. Uh, painting them, one heck of a lot of paintings. But, you, you know, they say that if you do something for 10,000 hours, you kind of get get the hang of it. Well, I, I passed 10,000 hours many, many years ago. 10,000 hours? 10,000 hours of painting. I, I passed that. I remember when we were kids in grade school, and we practiced our penmanship, you know, the O's. Yeah, doing the, the circles. The yeah. the M's. They have the alphabet, the caps and the small letters around the perimeter. Okay. And then if you took that same uh, devotion to painting, I mean, I don't have the talent, but I imagine if you did, you know, you would be a, a better draftsman than if you didn't, right? That's right. I yeah. mean, all that skill. And you're, you seem to have a very natural ability, plus all the years you put into drawing, too. And your sense of color is just rapturously beautiful, huh? You have one of his paintings in your oh, bedroom. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, it's all about the color. You know, you, you can take a photograph of something you like, okay, and it'll capture the facts that's in the scene, but it doesn't capture the emotion. The unbelievable fact is that you were able to earn a living from it. Such a commercial venue, such a non commercial product. 
To succeed in that field is, must be unbelievable. The odds are, I don't know what's higher. The base player with a beeper and say is an optimist. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that joke. What about a, an accordion player with a beeper with a pager? Switch on that joke. You know the uh, definition of a gentleman, don't you? No. Someone who knows how to play the accordion but doesn't? Ah, yes, yes sir. <laughs> right. but, uh, and to get back to the painting, the, what I see about painting, you're going and it's just boom, an emotion. That painting either hits you or it doesn't, right? Yeah. It's just like primitive emotion. It's got to speak to you. Yeah. Yeah. Even without looking at the details of the painting, the, the overall impact should be there. Yeah, the details of any painting is really secondary to the emotional impact. Well, you have a great sense of color, and you have a great sense of story, and you have a great skill at uh, drawing. You know, I mean, all right, that painting right there, The Road Home, did you do that from memory? Did you, is that totally imaginary? Did, how did that come about? Well, it started life as a, a photograph I had in my thousands of photographs that I kept. But, uh, you know, I could show you the original photograph that I worked from, and it has no bearing on that. I mean, it doesn't look like it at all. I'm just using a couple of com compositional elements, but I change it, you know. I, I stretch it and give it deeper dimension. I change the colors 100% to uh, impart the, uh, the emotional impact of it. But, you know, you, you don't... Um, uh, you know, like I'm not trying to copy nature, I'm trying to uh, expand on it. So it, it's not a, an exact copy of what you would see there. And I like the journey, the penetration into the frame, also yeah. the reflected color. Yeah, that's what it is, the reflections, you got it. Of course you realized that was right. Cool. Yeah. I forgot I was on the show. Yeah, you're always on the show. I was so interested in, uh, yeah. in the art. The main thing in, uh, of the show. In the art. In the discussion of art. You're the reason for the show. I find that the discussion of humor is unfunny. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I always wondered why. They always have these shows with a bunch of funny people, and uh, it turns out very unfunny because humor is not based on it. The proof is in the pudding. And uh, even in painting, painting is a uh, distinctive attitude thing. Yeah, it really is. A lot of spontaneity to it. You know, I, I have a lot of people will always ask if they could come to the studio to, to see what I do. And I, you know, I tell you, it, it's like watching metal rust. You know, I mean, there's no real excitement to it. Watching you know? it's like a film. Watching a film being made is boring. very boring. Yeah, it, it makes no watching sense. The film to is great. Yeah. Unless you're working in it. Films are in fast. That's true. I guess that's why the some people love love working. You know, you have a big part. For a small part, it's very, very I think if you have a big trailer, that's the big trailer. Well, big Winnipeg. You have to have a big part to get a big trailer. I had I shared an RV in New York with Peter Boyle when I was doing uh, Taxi Driver two and a half weeks. That was fun. Oh, well, yeah, listen, what you were talking about Peter movies Peter Boyle, that was Joe. He was great in Joe. He was great. Oh, yeah. We went from Joe to the monster. One thing about when yeah. we did Taxi Driver, we'd show up, we shot at night. We'd show up at Scorsese Suite at the St. Regis on the 17th floor at about 6 o'clock. Peter Boy would have a whole yellow legal pad of stories. And he would tell him, and then Scorsese's secretary would record it all. And then whatever he would come up with, I would come up with something better because I had driven a cab. Like at one time he said, you know, I had these two guys in the back seat, and uh, one of them had a dog, and the dog threw up on the back seat. And I said, I always charge him five dollars to clean up the mess. Whatever he came up with, because I had the real experience. And then the Scorsese secretary would compress it, and then we'd get the new sides, and then we'd improvise for there. But he was fun to work with. He was a very witty great, guy. Was a great way to he work. was a Jesuit. He was trained as a Jesuit. Great way to work. See, we're telling our lives. You know, some people think, okay, we're just kibitzing, but everything. David's art, your humor, my acting, among other things, these are a part of our work, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah.
Well, you know, speaking why of taxi you, driver. Why do you have to tell somebody something and then tell them you tell them? Because my wife who taught school, she says, here's what That's you do. Similar to you tell what people what you're going to tell them, then you tell them, then you tell them what you told them. And she says, 30% of the people get it the first time, 30% will tell them to get it the second time, 30% will never get it. You know, she's probably right because that's the way television news seems to operate. President Obama is going to make a speech and the speech is going to be about the economy and President Obama comes on and he speaks about the economy and then there for a while they're going to tell you, you know, President Obama just spoke about the economy. And you wonder why they're feeding you at this level. Yeah, be vulgar for a minute. They're talking to you on this level. This is what TV news does. It takes a telephone call. You can see your, 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 your disease is coming I'm back. Coming out. New Yorker. And you take television news takes a telephone hole and then they give you a piece of news and they shove the shove it up your ass with a telephone hole. Oh, just give you the same thing over and over again, right? Yeah, you get splinters. <laughs> I mean, so t tell us what was the story behind that uh, scene you had in Taxi Driver? And, you know, you you came up with this uh, piece of. Errol Flynn's bathtub right, or something? Here's what happened. Here I am. Dave, Don is a big city guy. You're from Canada. I'm from a little town in Nebraska. So when I got the part of Doughboy, I knew there was a scene where I had to ask Doughboy, or I had to ask Travis, does he carry a piece? Later on, I take him to uh, the, the salesman where he buys the guns. And I thought, here, De Niro's one of the sharpest guys ever. So I said, how am I going to think? You know, if you mention that to a guy, he might think you're a cop, right? right. If I ask you, do you want to buy a gun? So I wanted to show him that I was sicker than he was. So I got this piece of Errol Flynn's bathtub from the Pines. I ran down the dialogue to Scorsese before the scene, and then I said, and if you don't like it, I said, I'm going to try to sell him a piece of Errol Flynn's bathtub. He can listen to me. Then I'm going to exit. Uh, before I exit, I came back, tried to sell it. If you don't like it, you can cut it out. Because they, that's what takes some time when they have to set up, right? Yeah, that's so right. He said, fine, I love it. So he just told De Niro, Harry's going to try to sell you something. And then you just listen to him and then say no. And what I thought was, in the fu it's a metaphor because in the future, somebody's going to have a piece of article of De Niro's and they're going to try to sell it to somebody, right? Oh, uh, people see. live vicariously through movie stars. And I, as you said, I wanted to make him feel that I was sicker than he was. Right? Yeah, well, that, that uh, certainly came out. I mean, he, he looked visibly, uh, you know, uncomfortable. And he had a nice fall. That seat had a nice fall. It did, yeah. And later, Marty told me that that fit in because there were a lot of water images, you know, and I told him about, you know, two, one person, two person, three persons in the tub, yeah. you know, so it fit in with his theme of water images, you know, uh, I don't know what you call it, baptism, resurrection, washing of the sins, etc., right. you know, the fire hydrant, etc. That explains it. Yeah. Thank you for asking. That's the end of the Harry Northrup show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> no, we still got time left. For another dissertation How about Jack? On whatever suits his mind. <laughs> and his mind is so fluid and so action filled that we can always count on something new from his ever moving mind. Except that's right. David's art is increased by the day and about the use. Look up David Love and uh, whatever it is, Google, Google, whatever it is. <laughs> Google, Google his name, get a peek at his pictures, and by God, you Shall become, I invite Jack? You become a fan. Uh, and uh, you. I think it's for Harry's turn because he's cast to talk again. So let's go back to Harry. The life of Harry. <laughs> life of Riley, yeah. Um, okay. Listen to me. See this? Insecurity. <laughs> yeah, that's Insecurity. Right. Trying. He's trying to be your friend. He's going to sell you a piece of the Errol Flynn's tub. Errol Flynn's tuxedo. Don, yeah. when I look at you, I say to this, I'm not worthy. No, you are worthy. Not worthy. You are worthy. Should we what? invite Jack? What? <laughs> Should we invite Jack? Oh, you, you know it. He's in over here. Jack, Jack's Jack. here. Jack. Get him over Jack, here. Jack, you remember Jack from Come Broadway? Over here. Come over here. Sit Broadway Jack. Sit yeah. Favorite, favorite of Broadway. Sit yes. down. Mr. David Mr. Mamet. Uh, Mr. Jack Ask any person of over 90 and they'll remember yeah. Jack Wallace. And great Broadway. I happen to be visiting. Just happened to be here. There's Jack. Hello, Jack Wallace. I'm here without my nerves. Oh God! She's, no one you look so good. Is it a wet nurse or? Uh, you look very. Hey, you're looking pretty good yourself. 
She got good news and everything is good. Yeah. yeah. Her. Are you working in anything right now? Uh, yeah, yeah, I am. I'm doing a thing at uh, Eagle Heart. I'm reoccurring. You are working? See, there are actors working! <laughs> <laughs> Don't think you're the only one. As he calls out I to sweep, West Hollywood. I sweep, I didn't say it, I, I sweep up and everything. You know, oh, like, great um, actor, great. Clean, Everybody clean knows him on Broadway, 48th Street, nobody. And they know Broadway, me on the Broadway and, Broadway and the freeway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on some way they know you. <laughs> some so, Jack, where's the guy from Chicago? You know like Chicago. Yeah, like Chicago's York, like too. California, it's not New York, it's Chicago. I miss New York. Uh, uh, what? But I you like were you were theatrically active in I never knew Chicago had a theater. For crying out loud! Oh, am I going to get yelled at? No, no, you're but, not. But tell me, what 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 was the what was the theatrical scene in Chicago? It's heavy. It's heavy. There's a really? lot of yeah. There's a lot of theaters there. An awful lot. Uh, they imported a lot of stuff uh, from New York and this wonderful stuff and whatnot because it's theater and everything. But the uh, smaller theaters, uh, they're doing their own writing. Uh, that there's a lot of new stuff that comes out of there. That's Even now, right. today, today, yeah. yeah. Do, do do shows open up in Chicago and then go go to New York for yeah. anything? Yeah, yeah, they do. Well, Glen Gary was one of them. Was I, the I used to work for Playboy Club. Oh. Man, that's high theater. Oh, yeah. well, well, uh, how much did you, you see, pay him to, to work the Playboy? You see, Playboy didn't work <laughs> in, in, <laughs> yeah. in today's day. Uh -huh. Playboy didn't succeed in today's day. So it was uh -huh. so successful then. See the difference in the year? Uh -huh. They got so accustomed to nudity and ah, right. different things. There was no shock, so, so they opened up and another couple of girls have... Clothes on, yeah, there you go. I keep thinking of the nudity. Say that again. You keep thinking about the nudity. Go actors. I like to hear it once in a while. Actors, yeah. Yeah. photographers, as as too. As the closest you're going to get. As close as Margot lets me get. Yeah. Margo it's just to say the word. Margot's his wonderful wife. How long have you been married? 11 years. That's tough for us. I really got a blood and die actor. I had a lot of girls want you. How about you? Well, me, comics, they never want comics. Comic, uh, comics, they want to go no, for if, No, if you make them laugh, they you're a big hit. You're yeah, a big not, well, not really. They a, say that, but lady, eventually you know. they just want a sandwich and a cup of coffee. And, go yeah. to and what a sweet... <laughs> What a sweet guy you've been, but an actor, boy, he get dramatic, women get excited, they perspire. An actor, God, look Wait, what's going on in this I remember the perspiring, but I don't remember all the rest of it. See what a good actor you were? <laughs> you can't act perspiring, can you? And then you think about one time you perspired and stop perspiring from that time? Oh, no. oh, I didn't tell you, I was only actually acting the, the, the perspiration, and it's not real. You know, how will I know, how will I know, because you're an actor, if your perspiration is real? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. You might be acting, you will only you know real perspiration from acting perspiration. I made myself laugh. A good director can spot that. A good director can fake perspiration, holy God, God. You know, you know. Let me see you cry once more. I would go to the, you know, you, you perspire at the steam bath. And when I would walk into a steam bath and everybody sat down, I thought it was a pause and I would bow, you know. <laughs> Well, you, you, you don't get it, but you, you, somebody get uh, somebody else. Somebody up there got it. My mind drifted away. I can't hold on to it. And, you know, my my mind has to be anchored. The minute that I get, it, it unanchors itself, I, I'm not. I used to be responsible for it. I could find it. Yeah, I, you do okay. I sometimes look around for my mind all the morning in the house. I can't find it. I can't go out of the house until I find it. So I don't want to go around my mind. What it would look like? I, what would it look like? I don't know if I went out. Without my mind, I look, I look like a I look like a mayor. Well, Don and Jack, what's that? We're coming to the end of the old no show. More bar, wait, wait no more art. No more art. No more. Wait a minute! Harry. I just got here. Wait, no wait more minute. Northrop yeah. poems. We've been very guiding letter quest for Harry Northrop poems. But hey, Tony, well, we'll have to do that another day. Well, we? yeah, but yeah. he doesn't write that often. He waits for the specific, specific, forget it. Specific moments. Yes. No, that's there. not the word. Oh, okay. Propitious, propitious, propitious moments. Propitious moments. 
As soon as I got here, all the tables were cleared around here. Now they're back. Okay. You see that? Knowing, knowing that I'm gone. You can know Jack. I want to thank Jack for coming back. He's the only guest that we had oh, thank that you. came on more than once. More than once, today. The word for today. Once, that's and right. And didn't cost us much the second time. The, the, the word for today. The first time. Yes, what is oh, the yes, word of what today? Is the word? See, he remembered that. That's why he came back. Yeah. He remembered Lollygagging. 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 Great word. I like lollygagging. My word. Thank you. Uh, I had a father once tell me to stop lollygagging. I was kissing a girl. Well, okay, well, on that last hey, word of lollygagging. Harry, no, Harry, didn't say Harry, Harry come back and say goodbye. It's over. Harry, somebody invited you for a free coffee. He'll do anything for a free coffee. And goodbye, Harry. Goodbye, Harry. goodbye David. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Don. Thank you, Jack. Thank Don. you, Margo. The whole point of the show is you. I love you. No, that's all right. That's and with right. that, we say goodbye from Times goodbye. Times 3 at the Silver Spoon Restaurant in West Hollywood. And you even met a special guest the second time.